so <laughs> someone is not letting me film today <laughs> so as soon as you walk into my house you're going to see these double doors that lead into dining room living room and a bunch of plants combo and then you have this really upward space of a wall that i'm trying to use as a dropping zone for my keys and mask and it's not looking pretty so i went online like everybody else does to try to find ideas and i found janice's channel so i reached out to her to do a collab video and I made a new friend and also got so many cool ideas, so please go over to Jenna's channel. This is some footage from her lovely place and she really has some ideas and inspiration that you can pick up on and you can have make a new friend too. Even though it was cold, my boys and I went out for a walk and collected some leaves. Not as many because it's winter and not spring, but we had a good time while doing this. Then we came back home and I pulled out my Das Clay. This is not a sponsored, I just like this clay. And I took a bottle of water and removed it cap from it so that I can use it as a rolling pin. And then took some parchment paper or baking paper to protect my space and not let the clay stick to my tabletop. I took the piece of clay and made a little bowl with my hands and tried to guesstimate how big of a piece I will need to cover my hook. Then I rolled my bottle one direction, unstick the clay and roll it the other direction because I want to make sure it's wide enough to cover my hooks. In this case, I am going to be using this IKEA hooks that I found, three for a euro, the plot kind or um, type, I don't know if I just butchered that name completely, but for three pieces for a euro, I thought this was very affordable and also very customizable clink clink more ideas <laughs> then i just made sure it was covering the white part of the hook and leaving enough space in the hook area for my keys to be able to fit in there and it did so i was very happy with the results i got then it was time to test the lip imprinting in this thin piece of clay Keep in mind that it's thin, so it's more fragile than other pieces of clay that you can work with. And I rolled it very gently on top of my piece and see how big of an imprint I was getting. And this is an avocado leaf that I got from my tree back at home. Yes, I live in an apartment and I have an avocado tree. It's possible, people. <laughs> this is the um, imprint that I got. And then I made a bunch of little bowls, sort of the same size as the first one just guesstimating here and I started rolling them the same way in one direction then I unstuck the little piece put it the other direction and started rolling again and once I had a bunch of this made and yes I made a bunch because this is a great gift for friends and family just wink wink hint right there for Valentine's or Christmas or birthdays and I took my leaf and I started trying to place it the way I wanted to. I discovered that leaves that are thicker, you're able to do this and manipulate them into looking a certain way. In this case, I was trying to make kind of like a little tree with the leaf. And then I rolled my bottle gently on top of it to make sure I got the same print or imprint all over the place. And this is the very satisfying part of it all taking your leave out and looking at the design you created i really really love this part of the project this is what my little tree or similarity to a tree looks like and i love the rough edges if you don't like this take a little water and rub it with your finger and if you don't like to get your water um, out right now then wait for them to dry and you can totally sand this part out and it will be perfect for you to just get it all smooth i promise i've worked with clay a lot now i try to do the avocado leaf again but this time it lifted and it gave me a double imprint so i got a little bit of water and wetted my clay if you do this the leaf will kind of stick to the clay and it was much easier to get a cleaner print just in case this happens to you with your lips, just a little trick for you to manage that little inconvenient 
part of the job, but it's stuck to the bottle too. Don't worry, this is not a big deal. You'll survive and your project will be fine. And look at that cute imprint. Isn't it that adorable? So yeah, I made a lot of them and I kept using the same trick for the little teeny tiny leaves because um, these tend to move. I don't know why, maybe it's just my weather being super cold and weird or just the leaf being so thin and delicate. But this trick worked and I kind of arranged them the way I wanted them to look like and it was very satisfying. Once all my pieces were finished, it was time to pop them into the oven. And yes, you can bake or dry clay. The trick is to put them in the oven before you turn them on and then turn it on at 60 degrees Celsius so that all your pieces warm up in the same way at the same time. And then you just flip them like pancakes and once they're dry, then you can take all your pieces outdoors if you're going to spray them with the sealer as I do. I like to use this MTN varnish acrylic finish, it's matte, so it protects my pieces from humidity and sometimes from dirty little fingers. So if you have any other sealer, feel free to use that, or if you want them to look super shiny, then probably you can use Mod Podge for that. But yeah, this works really good for me. While waiting for that to set and finish drying on their own pace, I patched the wall, sanded it, painted it, and let it dry. So waiting for that, I took a little break to get some coffee and some banana bread and get some energy back into my system. And then I found this piece of wood and I started staining it. Now I stain my pieces of wood with a rag and just whatever stain you have. I'll leave the materials down in the description in case you want to use the same one. I don't know if this is the right way to do it or not. I just get my rag and, you know, rub it all over the place, trying to get it covered as much as I can and as fast as I can because we don't want this to dry ugly. You also want to protect your wood. So in this case, I'm using wax and I'm rubbing it in circles to get it real good inside that wood. Once I knew how much I needed, I just grabbed a little bit more and then I applied it all over the place in the wood so that it will be ready for me to just keep rubbing in circles. Once you do this, you wait for it to dry. Then my piece was ready and I printed the word keys and I was trying to find a good placement in my wood for it. I decided to also play with the placement of my little hooks. I thought I was going to do one side by side the other, but at the end I started changing and wiggling and this is what it's going to look like. The keys is going to go to the left and then you're going to have three hooks to the right and three hooks to the left and alternating the height of each one of them. Now, in order to get that keys word inside or in my wood, I just took some tape and taped like around the word so that it wouldn't move because after taping it and securing it in place, you're going to take a pen or a pencil, something to lift an imprint into the wood with and start working your keys around it. And what I mean by that is that you take your pencil and try to push as hard as you can into the wood so that when you lift your paper up, you can see the keys word into the wood. So it will be easier then to apply some color to it. This is what it would look like. I think you can barely see it, but you can still see it. Now, once we have that finish, then I took this Posca pen. I just had this around. It's my first time trying it in a piece of wood. And I went over the word with it. First, I went around it and then I just fill it up and it worked really good. You can touch up some details once you're done so that it looks a little bit more professional, but I like the rustic look of things. 
so I try to stay away from perfect and just be good with it's all done and my project is gonna be really nice. Then I decided to incorporate some black into the piece because I do have some black accent metal pieces in my decor. So I just went and measured around the little board and I went across the board keys and then around the border so that it gave it kind of like a little frame to just make it a little bit more interesting for the eyes. This is how it's looking so far. That black line on my right side means that I was cleaning my ruler in between each tracing so that I wouldn't get the Posca pen as much all over my piece of wood. Then it was time to get my hooks and put my little clay pieces on top of them and see how they look together. Find out what position I wanted to lay them in because some leaves I wanted to put upside down and others right side up. So this was really fun and kind of challenging. Then with the help of my glue gun, I started sticking my pieces together. If you don't have a hot glue gun, you can use whatever other glue that you have that is strong enough to keep these two together. And when you're going to press down to actually get it really secure in there, don't apply so much pressure because then that will make your little piece crack. Remember that these are thin so that we can actually use the hook part. We couldn't make it so thick, but um, it was pretty easy and none of mine broke. So keep an eye on your pressure. Then it was time for me to start arranging my pieces and I really wanted to make this pretty but also functional so i took some props that i was going to hang here anyways and i was trying to measure how far away from each other they needed to be in order for my keys to fit and my mask to fit and i didn't want it to hang too low so this was really helpful and once i had that figure out and all my props you know, in the place where I wanted them, it was time for me to glue them into my piece of wood. To do this, I just removed the adhesive part, the little paper that comes in the back where the adhesive is. They're not gonna hold too much um, weight, so this was enough glue or enough adhesive to put them in place and hold them there. Now that all of them are ready to go, I took my props off, took my piece out, and nailed it to the wall. This is how my project ended up looking like, and my place looks a little bit more refreshed and pretty, all thanks to Jana's great hook idea. This is it for me for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you go over to Jenna's channel. Her channel link is down in the description below. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments, suggestions, anything. Um, I'll try to respond to your comments there. And if you want to get more personal, share your project with me on Instagram at MixItUpMarcy. Have an amazing day. Bye.